for decades. Nigerians living abroad have been contributing immensely to the growth and development of their host countries in the areas of science, technology, finance, arts, medicine, and other varied fields of human endeavor. Over time, these citizen ambassadors of Nigeria have morphed into a huge force that has won laurels in every calling known to man wherever they are domiciled in the world. With these in mind, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TETFAN, recently in its Meitama headquarters, played host to the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, Honorable Dr. Abike Dabiri Erewa, in her quest towards seeking the domestication of the knowledge, talent, and prospects of the diasporan community for the overall benefit of Nigeria. The NITCOM chairman spoke on the need for promoting brain circulation and urged TED Fund to support the effort her commission is making in that regard. So what we want to do with TED Fund is how can we have that collaboration of having them purposefully and with a structure come together to see what can be done in Nigeria. We also believe that because TED Fund focuses a lot on research, we can have what we call a global um, a diaspora resource and research center. Now we've gone far with the University of Ibadan that has actually said, look, this is the land for you. It can be done. So we're wondering if we can partner with TechFund for you to put resources into having this global, this global diaspora research and resource center. And I believe this will be a huge, huge, huge intellectual base for our intellectuals in the diaspora. And I believe it will also be a legacy that Ted Fund can be proud of. Responding, architect Sonny S.T. Echiono said the fund is willing to partner with NITCOM on its mission and will be prepared to fund the establishment of education centers and facilities abroad in order to hone the potentials of the Nigerian community living overseas. The Ted Fund boss commended Honorable Dr. Abike Dabirirewa for her laudable efforts in harnessing potentials of the Nigerian community in diaspora, noting that the partnership between the two organizations will initiate, promote, and support the diaspora in exporting modern research, innovation, and techniques back home. Nigeria is ripe to begin to leverage the huge potential that our diaspora community can bring to all facets of our development. Not the least of, in fact, the most important of it is the educational sector. Tefon has a long history of these collaborations and identifying key players from our diaspora community. They happen to be our contacts more often than not with the institutions where we send our scholars uh, on academic staff training and development. Over the years, we've trained more than 35,000 academic staff. And about a third of that, or a little even over a third of that, are abroad. Just like India did, given the serious revenue challenges we have, I believe our diaspora community will help us fill the gap. And I'm not just talking about remittances. But in driving those necessary transformative actions we need to take to stabilize and also to project our country in the direction of growth. The NITCOM chief executive later presented her organization's newsletters and publication on 600 diaspora icons to the TED Fund management through the executive secretary. Inadequate foreign exchange, poor book quality, and escalating demand for published works, among other militating factors, have been the bane of the academia for a good number of years. To tackle these lingering menace, the TED Fund, through its inventive higher education book development project, recently sponsored the publication of 10 indigenous textbooks for use in the Nigerian academic community. Co-authored by 56 tutors from Nigerian tertiary institutions, 
60% of the books are being published by Tetfond's supported academic publishing centers, APCs. Speaking at the public presentation, Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, represented by the Minister of State, Mr. Goodluck Nana Opia, stated that the dearth of high-standard tertiary-level textbooks has reached near-endemic proportions, hence the formation of Ted Fund's Higher Book Development Project. He said the quality of the book's authorship and the domiciliation of their production locally will not only engender the availability of suitable books in the varied disciplines, taking cognizance of the nation's local environment and its peculiarities, but will also safeguard national pride and ease the pressure on scarce foreign exchange. The paucity of indigenously authored and produced tertiary level textbooks and related academic publications in the nation's tertiary education institutions is a well-known fact. Over time, Nigerian tertiary education institutions became dependent on books published outside the country with the attendant consequences of the pressure on demand for foreign exchange. It is equally worrisome that the quality of most academic publications in our country leaves much to be desired. It is therefore expected that nurturing the culture of quality authorship and production of indigenous books will not only ensure the availability of relevant books in the diverse subject areas that take cognizance of our local environment and sensitiveness, but will also safeguard national pride and reduce the demand for foreign exchange. The minister also hailed the fund for putting the technical advisory group TAC in place to support the agency in ensuring that good quality books are being produced by Nigerian authors. On his part, TAC chairman Professor Charles Awo said 20 TED fund sponsored textbooks were published in 2014 covering different fields and those have been widely lauded within and outside the country. The driving force, as you've seen today, is, is TED Front. And the primary objective is to address the paucity or scarcity of um, reading and learning materials in our universities. Um, at one time, some of our first generation universities, we are rated highly in terms of um, knowledge dissemination. Because universities are known for research and also for the knowledge that they generate. We disseminate this knowledge through books, journals, and publications. So these books that we have produced are books written by Nigerian academics. And I want to stress from all over the world, because these days you don't have to be on site. Some of them contributed from their bases. So we are sure about the quality of these books. Not only will they be accepted locally, they are of international standards. Representative of the coordinating editors, Professor Sarah Anyao, and representative of the authors, Dr. Israel Onokero Imide, applauded the Education Ministry and TED Fund for sponsoring the all important project and spoke on the relevance of the books to the nation's academic environment. We want to say thank you, sir. The 10 TED Fund sponsored basic textbooks are to be unveiled and presented to the public today. On behalf of the coordinating editors and co-editors, we are very grateful. And we are honored to be a part of this laudable project. I want to appreciate them for first and foremost and the federal government for this uh, project. Uh, financial deepening is coming at a time where we will have crisis in the Nigeria financial system. A few, a few days ago, we'll be hearing about money being trapped, airline being you know, moving out of the country. If you are solvent, if finances are made available for investors, people will not be talking about you know, money being trapped and all of that. So financial deepening is all about looking at the Nigeria financial system and how, how money can be made available for economic growth. I think that is the basic of this thing. Also speaking at the event, Executive Secretary of Ted Fund architect Sonny S.T.H. Chiono, who expressed delight over the quality of the books 
said 30 additional books sponsored by the organization will be unfurled before the end of the year, even as he assured of the fans' readiness to sponsor production of 50 more textbooks next year. We cover all sides of the every academic pursuit, all the subject areas. But yes, there is because of the need. We are operating on the basis of need, and we and we discover that the pressure, the paucity of books, is more prevalent in the sciences and the technical fields. So naturally, um, there are more of such books in those specialized areas. But you are going to find books on humanities. You are going to find books on um, medicine, on pharmacy. Made books on engineering, on architecture, and all the fields basically. The epoch making event drew attendees from the academic staff unions, writers, heads of education agencies, and many more. The vaccine development efforts of the Tertiary Education Fund, TED Fund, have started yielding visible results as the COVID-19 vaccine project sponsored by the fund will be ready for first clinical trial in November this year. The project, which is a mega research grant intervention, tagged accelerated development of COVID-19 vaccines using innovative technology approach, is a collaborative effort involving cluster researchers from five different institutions to consolidate problem-solving research and promote innovation in Nigeria. The heartwarming news was revealed when the team of vaccine development researchers came on a visit to TED Fund headquarters. The Director of Research and Development slash Centers of Excellence, Dr. Salihu Girey Bakari, spoke on the commitment of TED Fund to continue to sponsor research in the nation's tertiary institution since that is one of the core mandates propelling the fund. He also spoke on the level of involvement of TED Fund in vaccine development. Research and development plays a pivotal role in the development of higher education and in the development of any nation in the world. And as a result of that, the TED Fund Act 2011 clearly mandates TED Fund to intervene in the areas of research and development, research publications and development. And uh, as, uh, right now, Tetfon is focusing more and more on in the areas of research, but research for impact, not just research for research sake, research for development. The COVID-19 vaccine is actually a, a research cluster. The group came together to say that, look, we need to solve a, this problem of um, COVID-19 vaccine, because if we, are wa if we were to wait for the West, in particular, or Europe, to bring their vaccine, you know, and to serve about 200 million or more Nigerians, we will be wasting forever. Because we saw very clearly that when it comes to health matters, those who produce those vaccines start uh, solve, to solve their own problems first and foremost. The vaccine production cluster is made up of researchers from the National Veterinary Research Institute, VOM, Usman Danfordio University, Sokoto, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, University of Jos, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Lagos, and National Research Institute for Chemical Technology, Zaria. Vice Chancellor of Usman Danfordio University, Sokoto, Professor Lawal Suleiman, Bill Biz, who led the team of researchers to brief the executive secretary of TED Fund, architect Sony STH you know, on the progress made so far, explained that they were able to make the breakthrough through the maximum support of the fund. We have uh, come to inform TED Fund how far we have gone. Uh, at the moment, the consortium is working on two candidate vaccines, one at uh, Osman Danfordia University, the other one at Naima, Lagos. Uh, the one partner of the consortium, Narit uh, Zaria, is to work on the nanoparticle that will carry the vaccines. Uh, the second partner is University of Jos that will do the preclinical trial on animal. And the last of, but, uh, of the consortium is uh, VOM, 
Veterinary Research Institute that will do the scale up for commercial production of the vaccines. And God willing, within the shortest possible time, we should be able to have uh, vaccines for, uh, produced by Nigerian for Nigeria, not only Corona vaccine and also la, but Lassa fever vaccines. Tet Fund uh, put in a consortium, not only one group, they look for expertise across the Nigerian uh, uh, tertiary education and other such institute to come up with this consortium, which is different rather than uh, people working in silos in their own places. Expertise are pulled together and that's why I give the, the speed at which we arrive at where we are now. But, uh, over the state of one have been working on infrastructure, which they have done enough. If you go around our tertiary institution, you have done that. Now one of the core mandate of the third is research and what they are doing is really wonderful and God willing within the shortest possible time you see a lot of the outcome of this research third one is funding. He recalled how the COVID-19 pandemic ravaged and unleashed untold hardship on humanity globally, noting that Nigeria was only saved by divine intervention since the nation was not prepared for such eventuality. A presentation by Dr. Bashir Mohamed Bello of Usman Danfordio University, Sokoto, revealed that it has become a matter of urgency for Africa to join the rest of the world in the production of its own vaccine, as it was estimated that the continent currently imports 99% of its vaccines and consumes 25% of global vaccine supply. He explained that this gave rise to the team coming together to form a consortium and put up a strong proposal with which they approached Ted Fund for sponsorship under its research and development intervention. He noted that the team was meticulous in their research by ensuring that all the factors responsible for the re-emergence of the different COVID-19 variants were considered to make sure they don't manifest in future. Responding, the Ted Fund Executive Secretary, architect, architect Sony S.T. Echono, lauded the team for the great feat achieved within a time limit to make the country proud with the progress recorded in the vaccine production. Um, I want to, um, at this stage, encourage you to continue this. And then the fact that it's a cross-cutting collaborative effort, it's something that uh, we welcome. We in Ted Fund have always been behind this. And this is one initiative we will be proud to continue to support till you get to the end, which is a Nigerian-made vaccine to address COVID first, and then other vaccines to address all the other uh, challenges that we face. Um, so I welcome you. I wish you the best of luck in your meetings with the Ministry of Health, and especially your presentation to Mr. President as well as a foreign investors. He explained that it is a national project and as such, it has become a national pride, assuring that Ted Fund will continue to assist the cross-cutting efforts of the researchers to ensure the desired goal is achieved. The Executive Secretary of Tertiary Education Trust Fund, architect Sony S. T. H. Uno, has restated the commitment of the fund to keep supporting information communication technology infrastructure in Nigeria's tertiary institutions. This was disclosed during the inauguration of ICT Project Committee for Ted Fund Zonal Intervention. Architect Echiono said the ceremony underscored the importance the fund attaches to the use of ICT to drive its interventions at all times. Equally critical to the organization's goal is the involvement of stakeholders in decision-making as the fund refocuses its interventions to solving specific and critical issues identified by the beneficiaries. This committee, given its work of experience, is tasked with providing needed support and advisory services for the successful implementation using but not limited to the following terms of reference as the guide. Provide guidance for implementation of ICT programs and projects under this general intervention. Given what we just said and the status of our institutions currently, we should be able to advise on what needs to be done to take us from where we are. We recognize the fact that not all institutions are at the same level. And that is why we by asking them to suggest to us 
what they need to do to get to an optimal operational level. Responding, the chairman of the committee, Professor Samuel Edo Umoekumo, expressed the committee's appreciation to the executive secretary and TED Fund for the initiative and assignment. He assured the fund that the committee will do its utmost best towards achieving set goals. He said lack of internet access continues to be the sticky point in leveraging ICT for teaching, learning, and research. Telephone has been consistent over the past four years. Some of us have been following and pursuing the usage of ICT to enable teaching and learning in our beneficiary institutions. And the efforts so far include, but not limited to, one, the highly impactful productivity skills training of teaching and non-teaching staff of our institutions using the ICDL certification training modules. Many of our colleagues are having, having that. Two, the remodeling of our institutional website to improve their digital content and footprint. Some of us decided to use Harvard standards in our respective schools. And we must not go to the dance. The executive secretary of TED Fund, architect Sony S.T. Echuno, while inaugurating the committee and joined them to hit the ground running as a fund will be expecting visible and tangible results in the next three months. The Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and Services and its House of Representatives counterpart recently paid separate visits to TED Fund as part of their oversight functions. The Senate Committee, led by its chairman, Senator Hamid Baba Keita, and his opposite number in the House, Honorable Dr. Aminu Suleiman, both congratulated architect Sony STH Chono on his appointment as the Executive Secretary and seized the moments to wish him a successful tenure. The both committees tried to correct the general misconception surrounding oversight responsibilities of the National Assembly and spoke on why such is necessary. The Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria resolved that committees should embark on oversight, visit of MDAs under their jurisdiction. Consequent upon their vote, the committee commenced this oversight with the main ministry, the Federal Minister of Education, yesterday, and today we are here in TEDFON. TEDFON, as we know, is an intervention agency set up to provide supplementary support to all levels of public tertiary institutions with the main objective of using funding alongside project management for the rehabilitation, restoration, and consolidation of tertiary education in Nigeria. Our committee, most of the time, will try as much as possible to be tall, uh, and a bit tough in the court, uh, sometimes uh, to the point of being misunderstood. Uh, but the intent is for us to be better equipped so that whenever questions are asked, uh, we will be speaking from a position of knowledge. Research is at the forefront of any development in any part of the country, in the world. Research. So if research is properly funded and there is commitment by the academia, you know, no result will come. So we are impressed and uh, we don't expect anything less. I'm happy to that being here today, something is coming up from here. This is kudos to you. This is one of you. Responding, architect S.T. Echuno, on behalf of management, spoke about the good work the committee is doing and expressed the fund's appreciation for the warm relations between the organization and the National Assembly. He also spoke on that fund's operations and his state of finances. He noted that the fund witnessed a steady rise in education tax collections from 2017 until 2021, when there was a noticeable drop. The trajectory, Mr. Chairman, from 2017 up to 2020, we saw, we saw witness a steady rise in collections under the education tax. But unfortunately, last year, for the 2021, there was a sharp drop. And that has left us in a very dear position. But um, the good news is that 
given Mr. President's commitment that he gave to the global community on increased funding for education, and again with the usual support of the National Assembly, this, the tax rate last year was increased from 2 to 2.5 percent. But the target is that before the end of this administration, it will increase to 3 percent. For the discerning observer, it is clear that the Tertiary Education Trust Fund is on a salutary mission. The fund is quietly creating and strengthening strategic partnerships, home and abroad, in its definitive drive towards contributing its part to the imperative growth, development and progress of Nigeria, the most populous black nation on Mother Earth.